Steve? Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council, again, for your, for your time. Um, we're here to honor uh, Robert Klecki for his life-saving activities back on February 5th. I want to run you through the timeline of just what happened that night. It was uh, Tuesday, February 5th at 7.23 in the evening. A crew of four from, uh, really, comprised of all three ships responded to the United Methodist Church on East Main Street for a male who had collapsed and was not breathing. The on-duty shift at the time was all the way out on Gorham's Court for a carbon monoxide incident. The room, uh, the whole building was full of CO that night, so wow. they were there. So I called back to the initiated, the guys came from home. So really, almost everybody that was there had come from home oh. and jumped on the, the ambulance yeah. and ran out there mm. and responded. The dispatcher was Tiffany Brown that night, who was our 2018 Dispatcher of the Year winner. Um, received the following information from 911. At 7.23 and 33 seconds, I got a call that a patient was not breathing and they're doing CPR. That was her first call. At 7.25, right after that, EMS was dispatched. At 7.25 and 22 seconds, she prompted them to make sure the CPR was being done properly and that they were to look for the AED, make sure the AED was, was involved. Uh, they came back, the caller came back and told them that Robert Klecki, a retired uh, paramedic, was doing CPR and they are using the AED. At 7.26 and 30 seconds, they received a call back that the patient was now breathing. And at 7.29 19 seconds, a couple minutes later, we got on the scene. So when they arrived on scene, the patient was breathing. So great job for dispatching as usual. Uh, really clear, concise directions. Uh, they, are, they are taught to provide CPR directions to people. With Robert, you know, we didn't have to do that. Uh, so actually this week is National Telecommunications Week. So see your uh, dispatcher, next time you see your, your dispatcher, uh, thank them. <coughs> Uh, when the medics arrived, they found Robert attending to Mr. Bennett, who was by then breathing. They started the ALS procedures, and during transport, Mr. Bennett actually regained consciousness. And care was transferred over to UH Portage to Dr. Adams and his staff. So here tonight, Robert, is uh, we have uh, Mr. Bennett, Tim Bennett, Robert Klecki, uh, Reverend David Palmer. <laughs> and um, so, Mr. Bennett, would you like to say a, a few words about what you remember or what, what you'd like to say about your ordeal? I'd like to say thank you to Robert again and to all the people that, that helped him. I was told by my surgeon that in an event like this, only 2% of the people do. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that CBR <coughs> ADDs do work. So I would recommend them highly to anybody in there. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I'm wearing one now. It's a portable one. They call it a life vest. Yeah. Okay. Luckily, it hasn't had to die yet. <laughs> That's good like news. It it stay that way. I know. We also have Reverend Palmer, David Palmer. He was He's the uh, senior pastor of the United Methodist Church. <coughs> and uh, he graciously uh, agreed to come and, and Say a few words what his what happened in his church if you if you'd like to yeah certainly I, uh, it was incredible just to hear this precise timeline I was a bystander that night happened to be there in the building uh, was there when somebody rushed up from the gym looking in the office wing for the AED which is where it is um, the uh, you know, from the church perspective God was at work that night that that if this was going to happen to Tim he was at the right place at the right time for it to happen because right there in that place in that time uh, was the right person to save him, Barbara Kalecki. Uh, that you know that Tim collapsed on the, on the basketball court during the game, um, his pickup game every Tuesday night at the church. Uh, the guys were at a basket; they turned and saw you know there he was he was collapsed. Uh, went over to him, uh, you know, a fellow ran out to, to look for the AED. Uh, Robert immediately was, of course, attending to him. They ran down the AED, um, and of course, with, with, with extraordinary professionalism uh, and effectiveness, Robert knew exactly what to do in terms of you know, working with him and, and reviving him in short order. 
Uh, of course, the call went out to the squad. The squad, I, the squad got there, even from, from my perspective, sitting in the church, I thought, boy, they really got there fast. And then hearing that they actually, people were running from home, it's incredible how quickly they got there. That's, just, that's so impressive. Um, uh, and you know, at the same time, you know, if you if you if you just take the way that timeline, when when Tim collapsed, he had no pulse, no breathing, um, and there were so the time there was just a, a few minutes from from when he collapsed to when Robert revived him, breath back, breathing back, you know, pulse back, uh, short span. Then it was another short span of, of a few minutes when the squad got there. But if Robert had not been there. From the moment when Tim collapsed, if all that span, say six minutes had gone by, with no pulse, no oxygen to the brain, and then finally, you know, the squad, as quickly as possible, came in, and if that had been the first moment when somebody had attended to Tim, well, according to the physician at the emergency room, who saw Tim later that night, hearing what had happened, her comment was, the outcome would have been different. Robert made the decisive difference, reviving Tim at, at that moment. And he's, Tim is standing here today uh, because of Robert. At the church, we thank God and we thank <coughs> Robert. <Clinton. laughs> start IVs, administered medication, and kept his heart from reverting back to a you know, lethal rhythm, we call it. So that was Caleb Sheldahl, <coughs> Vince Yost, Gary Lane, and Scott Simmons were on the call. So Robert, I would like to present you this plaque. Um, Kent Fire Department recognizes Robert Clarkey in honor of outstanding service to the community <coughs> and your life-saving actions on February 5th, 2019. Very good. civilian life-saving coin that we give out for, now that Robert's a civilian now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, life-saving coin to Robert for his actions at this as well. Hi. And that's it. Again, thank you for, for these types of people. Uh, this could be anybody. Um, Robert happened to be there, but I encourage and employ each and every one of you to learn CPR. We give hands-only CPR training, and we give certificate training um, all the time. So please learn CPR and learn where your AEDs are and learn how to use them and make a difference. <coughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Seventeenth, twenty nineteen. Would the clerk please read the roll? Mr. Amrine? Here. Mr. De Leon? Here. Mr. Farrar? Here. Mr. Kuhar? Here. Ms. Rosenberg? Here. Ms. Schaefer? Here. Mr. Sedoti? Here. Mr. Turner? Here. Ms. Wallach? Here. Okay, we have opening remarks by Mr. Amrine. Yeah, um, I wish uh, Chief Tosco was still here on Monday. Um, I came back from Kent State University from working out at the Wellness Center and walked in my front door to be met by smoke and uh, heat. And I uh, called 911. Our furnace had overheated and melted all of the uh, seals and all of the um, um, filters. And uh, I have to say, our fire department was there in a matter of minutes, kept a fire from occurring, were professional knowledgeable, they're just outstanding. And you know, I, I was hoping I'd never have to be serviced by the fire department, but uh, I just wanna say kudos to our fire department. They are extremely professional and very, very, very good. Wow. So would you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like, to, I'd like to move the minutes of the regular city council meeting of March 20th, 2019.
Second. Second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Then I would like to uh, move the public hearing CHIP program grant application 2019 of March 20th, 2019. Second. Any discussion on it? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, communications, audience, will the clerk please read uh, who's on the list? Yes. Timothy Nova or Nora? Novak. Novak, okay. All right, please state your name and address and for the record, and we'll give you three minutes to come to the microphone, please. My name's Timothy Novak. I go by Tim. <clears throat> I live at 331 Silver Meadows Boulevard, and I just want to announce that I'm running for um, Council of Ward 2. Just simple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. you. Straight, Straight to, to the point. I like Further? That. Julia Wiseman. Same thing, name, address for the record. You have three minutes. Hi, um, I'm Julia Wiseman. My address is 829 Bryce Road here in Kent. Um, and I'm nervous. Don't, <laughs> don't be. Um, first, I do want to um, thank you for the opportunity to address City Council. And second, I want to thank you for the work you do to make this a great city to live in. Um, we unfortunately recently have had a problem with a neighbor's improvised fire pit. Um, we're well aware that outdoor fires are popular right now, but um, they do, particularly if they are not cared for properly, carry significant public health dangers for me and for my fellow citizens. I work as a librarian, so I'm a fact and resource person. <laughs> so you got a packet that shows uh, where I got everything that I'm going to say. So, <laughs> and you're nodding because I work with your dog. <laughs> okay, so. Um, that resource kit has a lot more facts than I can fit into my three minutes. So, um, over the course of an evening, an open fire pit will emit close to one pound of smoke pollution. 90% of these emissions are in the deadly smaller than one micron range. According to the US EPA, particulate matter can get into your eyes and respiratory system where it can cause burning eyes, runny nose, and illnesses such as bronchitis. Fine particulate matter can also aggravate chronic heart and lung diseases and has been linked to premature death in people suffering from these conditions. The EPA advises that anyone with heart disease, COPD, emphysema, or asthma, and all children should steer clear of wood smoke. With the small space between our homes within the city of Kent, even the windows and doors closed, particulate matter and smoke can get into the house. Wood smoke exposure is also a risk factor for the development of lung cancer in non-smokers. It is chemically active in the body 40 times longer than tobacco smoke. It is 12 times more carcinogenic than tobacco smoke. One hour of exposure to wood smoke can lower immune defense 25 to 40 percent. According to the United States Fire Administration, in less than 30 seconds, a small flame can get completely out of control um, and turn into a major fire. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of our incidents with outdoor fires recently. Um, and before I do, I also want to say um, I know it's uh, very difficult because the individual wishes of a citizen sometimes have to, always have to be balanced with what's good for society. And I know it's a difficult terrain um, to moderate. Um, we had to call the fire department last fall because we had a new neighbor next door. He was using a makeshift fire pit of just bricks and a hole in the ground. And they were using a leaf blower and some kind of a liquid accelerant along with cardboard. So sparks mm. were going as high as the roof. Mm. Okay. We called again recently, early evening. They were starting a fire. It was incredibly smoky. After the fire department came out, um, our neighbors started taunting me, saying, keep it up, skank, keep it up, keep your head down. 
and I was trying to work in my garden, so my head actually was down, <laughs> and I also had something over my mouth so I could breathe. And then they went on to say, kill yourself, skank. Oh. Hmm. So after this, we called Gwen Rosenberg, and we called the fire chief. I do want to say they were both very helpful. They were very polite. I'm very grateful to them. Um, unfortunately, we had to call again last Saturday night. They had a very smoky fire. Um, I was inside my home. The windows were closed. I was having asthma trouble. I was using my rescue inhalers to avoid a trip to the emergency room. The fire department was very kind. They did come out. They extinguished the fire. So I do want to acknowledge my gratefulness there. But we're here because we do have some concerns about the writing and the implementation and the enforcement of the law. Um, and my three minutes are probably up, so I'm going to defer to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you, you gave us a copy. Is this yes. exactly what you read? All right. It wasn't exactly what I read, but it was information for all the facts that I gave, like where the articles that I used to get the facts okay. that I stated. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Further? Mark Wiseman. Good evening, uh, Council members and mayor. Um, thanks also, as my wife said, um, I'm, by the way, I'm Mark Wiseman. I live at 829 Bryce Road. I thought you maybe you might have figured that out. Um, and in, in any event, I appreciate the opportunity to address the council. Um, I'm not a librarian. I'm an attorney. And, and as an attorney, I've also been an assistant law director of a city. I've read this fire code very co carefully. You're, you have a fire prevention code. It's very well written. It's a very good code. Um, I'm not sure it's being enforced properly. And I'm also not sure that it's understood thoroughly by the, by the authorities. It criminalizes open burning. It makes it a misdemeanor. Uh, it makes it a punishable by a fine and by uh, potential jail to the owner of the premises and the occupant. We have not, you've heard the history, what my wife said, of, of the fires at, uh, with the neighbors, okay? Um, we've chosen not to call the police. I don't know that the police would respond. We, our primary concern was to have the fires extinguished. Your code um, and what the fire department have um, don't completely jive. The fire department has a sheet which was given to us by uh, the chief, and it refers to recreational fires and says that they're allowed. And then it goes through and cites uh, selections from the actual fire code. The word recreational fire doesn't occur or appear anywhere in your code. Mm. Open fires are not permitted. An open fire is defined in the code as being uh, distinguished from something in an enclosed container that has a chamber for combustion and a chimney or a stack. What we have in our neighbor's property is a, basically a pit, a hole in the ground with a couple rows of bricks around it. That is regulated by the code. It's regulated by state law as well. And it requires that that has to be 50 feet from a structure. Uh, from um, 50 feet from a, where a vehicle may be uh, located. This one is, not our yard is 59 feet wide. The neighbor's yard is 59 feet wide. It's mathematically impossible for a fire pit to be less than 50 feet from vehicles and structures in, on the adjacent properties. I'm here actually for guidance. I want to know what I should do. Should I call the police? And will the police come out and issue a citation? This is so serious that the city obviously finds it serious. You also have in your nuisance code, a public nuisance, chapter 56, 56101, um, the O, section O, lists open burning as a public nuisance, a violation of the open burning statute. <clears throat> we don't want to get anybody in trouble. We just want the fires to be put out so my wife can breathe, so the children in the neighborhood can breathe, so the rest of us can enjoy a peaceful and quiet um, you know, enjoyment of our own property. Um, I want to thank also Councilwoman uh, Rosenberg because I spoke to her after one of these incidents and she was very helpful, uh, very prompt in her response and uh, as well to the fire department. If the fire chief were here, I'm sure he would agree with me, they would much rather prevent a fire than have to fight one or put one out. Uh, the one night in question last fall, there were flames over the, sea, over the roofs of the houses because these people were blowing a leaf blower and some kind of fuel on a, on a fire. <coughs> It's about 10 feet from their house and about 25 to 30 feet from my house. So I just want to bring this to the attention of the city and, and uh, ask uh, that we look into whether we're going to enforce a very good law you already have on the books. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you for your input, but continue to call. 
It's a police department. And oh. Well, I will now, department. because it's been three incidents. I mean, it's clear if they're not 50 foot away from any structure, they're in violation and should be shut down. I'm not going to name any names. My wife spoke to an inf uh, one police officer on an informal basis about this, and he advised her that unless the, fl the fire was 30 feet high, they wouldn't do anything about it. Now, I don't know if that's the official position of the police department, but that's rather discouraging to somebody who speaks to the police and finds that. That's why I'm here. I think there just needs to be some coordination and maybe some training and education. Okay. If I could jump in, too. Uh, after um, Gwen called me after talking to you, I went ahead and talked to one of the lieutenants on staff and the lieutenant, police, police lieutenant, and he said he was going to go ahead and make sure the night shift supervisor was aware of the potential situation so that if the call came in, he was kind of queued up already in terms of he understood that there was, this has been an ongoing pattern, it's not something. So some of those conversations have already occurred. So uh, I do think from like what the mayor said that um, you always hate to involve the police if you don't have to. Absolutely. But if sometimes there are, as you know, there, you know, even just filing a police report can often be enough to get people's attention to stop doing things um, that are questionable, I guess. Thank you. Well, thank you. I will say that um, some, some of those handouts you have, um, I have worked with um, <coughs> Jeff Tyler in the um, inspector's office, and we realize that there are contradictions between the two, and we are working on um, having one piece of paper to give the fire department and with the understanding that they know what to do when they go out to those fires. So we're, we're, we're handling that. Thank you. My, my neighbors and I all appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further? Mm -hmm. Tom Myers. Name and address for those minutes, Tom. Thank you. I'm Tom Myers, uh, 1750 Oak Hill Drive here in Kent. Um, excuse me for reading this, but this will make it go in three minutes. Um, <laughs> I would like to offer a brief review of what the Land Use Committee considered two weeks ago and what will be considered later in the meeting related to Nipano Company's rezoning of an approximately three-acre parcel of our overall 15-acre property. This property is bordered by Summit Street on the north, Franklin Avenue on the east, William Street on the south, and Mogador Road on the west. Although this parcel has had railroad tracks running through it over the years, it has never had any serious use as an industrial piece of property. In fact, it was probably zoned industrial only because an industrial operation owned it and not because it was used that way. As explained at the last council meeting two weeks ago, this parcel has been vacant for years. It is somewhat triangular in shape, and its topography is challenging with an embankment which rises as high as 16 feet, running through the middle of the property. Simply put, this is not a piece of property on which a factory can easily be located. Because of this, we believe that commercial zoning is a higher and better use for it. We are requesting that the zoning be changed for this three-acre parcel from industrial to CD commercial downtown district zoning. Such zoning is located adjacent to this parcel, just north on uh, Summit Street to the north, which eliminates any concern about spot zoning. With the recent rebirth of several areas in downtown Kent, we believe that CD zoning of this three-acre parcel will help to continue Kent's redevelopment. Specifically, we believe that the proposed zoning change will help to expand economic growth, development, and job creation, enhance the Mogador Road entry way into Kent, generate new future tax receipts and associated revenues for the city, and incentivize future new development in town. Additionally, we believe that the proposed zoning change meets both the goals and the spirit of the City of Kent Bicentennial Plan by creating safe pedestrian walkways, creating employment opportunities, helping to connect the downtown district to area bike trails, and facilitating economic opportunities for all of Kent's diverse residents. In summary, therefore, the proposed change of zoning request is not only based on sound economic consideration, it is also in keeping with many of the goals set forth in Kent's long-range bicentennial plan that was adopted in 2004. As a lifelong resident and current employer in Kent, 
and as a member of a family that has lived and worked in this community for many generations, I thank the City Council for its thorough and thoughtful consideration of our rezoning proposal. Thank you. Thank you. John Flynn. Name, address, three message. John Flynn, 1491 River Edge Drive, Kent. Uh, again, I'm here as I was before the committee uh, to uh, add my support to that rezoning request uh, and to remind the council of uh, the testimony that it heard at the committee meeting of uh, Howard Boyle and John Emig and Doug Fuller and myself as to why this is a good thing. Uh, the fact that the downtown has expanded uh, south of uh, Summit Street already uh, with the drugstore and the Ardell Parts store and other commercial buildings. This is essentially in keeping with the expansion of the downtown. Can't really add much more than Mr. Myers said. It's, it's a good thing for the city of Kent, and we ask for your approval. Thank you. Thank you. That's it? That's it. Written communications, please. Sustainability Commission meeting agenda for April 1st, 2019, and the minutes of March 4th, 2019, received on March 28th, 2019. Planning Commission staff report and meeting agenda for April 2nd, 2019, received March 26th, 2019. The Board of Zoning Appeals staff report and meeting agenda for April 15th, 2019, received April 4th, 2019. The Park and Recreation Board meeting packet for April 18th, received April 15th, 2019. The Civil Service Commission special meeting agenda for April 15th, received April 11th, 2019. And we also got a new liquor license request from the Ohio Department of Liquor Control for 116 Kent LLC, located at 295 South Water Street, Suite 116 in Kent and Chief Lee returned with no objections. Moved to return with no objections. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mike, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign, thank you. And that's it. All right, thank you. I'd like to move. City manager's I'm report, sorry. Chair. I'd like to move items one through 14 on the city manager's report. Second. Second by high, is there any question? Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Is there further, Mr. Roller? No, thank you, Mayor. Okay. Standing committees, uh, I need a motion for committee of the whole of April the 3rd. So moved. Second. Second by Mike. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have uh, uh, some board and commissions appointed. We had a balloting process. Um, would somebody, Jack, would you yeah. make the motion I'll to move, people one? <clears throat> move to accept the names Paul G. Selman III, seeking reappointment to the Board of Zoning Appeals, um, Renee uh, Ruhutsky, uh, the Sen Sustainability Commission, and Greg Seifert, Board of Building Appeals. Second. Is there a second? Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. They all got five votes, am I right? Yes. Okay. yes sir. <coughs> all right. Would clerk read draft number 201946 in title only? Yes. Draft number 201946. A resolution appointing Paul G. Salmon to the Board of Zoning Appeals and declaring an emergency. Suspension. Second. Second. Please call the roll on suspension. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sidoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. And Ms. Wallach? Yes. Adoption. Second. Second by Roger. Any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Seeing none, please call the roll for adoption. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sidoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Resolution number 2019-46 passes. Okay, thank you. Would the clerk read draft number 2019-47 in title only? 
2019-47, a resolution appointing Renee Rosatsky to the Sustainability Commission and declaring an emergency. Move suspension. Second. Call the roll suspension. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? <coughs> Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sadoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Move adoption. Second. Any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Seeing none, please call the roll for adoption. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sadoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Resolution 2019-47 passes. Okay, thank you. With the clerk read draft number 2019-48, title only. 2019-48, a resolution appointing Greg Seifert to the Board of Building Appeals and declaring an emergency. Suspension. Second. Please call the roll on suspension. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sidoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Move adoption. Second. Second. Is there any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Seeing none, please call the roll for adoption. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sidoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Resolution 2019-48 passes. Okay, thank you. That's it for the Committee of the Whole. Community Development, Mr. Kuhar. I would move to approve the minutes of the meeting of April 3rd, 2019, and the five actions. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Would the clerk read draft number 2019-36 in title only? 2019-36, an ordinance authorizing the city manager or his designee to approve a new special event application from the City of Kent Parks and Recreation Department for the Kent Torch Fest to be held on Thursday, June 20th, 2019, and the temporary closure of West Main Street from River to Water Street and declaring an emergency. Move suspension. Second. Second. Please call the roll on suspension. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sidoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farr? Yes. Move adoption. Second. Any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Seeing none, please call the roll for adoption. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sidoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Ordinance 2019-36 passes. Okay, thank you. With the clerk redraft number 2019-37 in title only. 2019-37, an ordinance authorizing an expanded street closings for Wizardly World of Kent that will be held on Saturday, July 27th, 2019 and to provide 48-hour notification of the street closings to all residents and declaring an emergency. Suspension. Second. Second. I, th I think it's Garrett and Roger. Please call the roll for suspension. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sidoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Move adoption. Second. Is there a discussion on adopting this ordinance? Seeing none, please call the roll for adoption. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sidoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ordinance 2019-37 passes. Okay, thank you. With the clerk redraft number 2019-38, title only. 2019-38, an ordinance authorizing the city manager or his designee to approve a new special event application from Kent State University Office of Alumni Relations, known as Flashes Forever, to be held on Wednesday, May 8, 2019, and the temporary closure of North Water Street between Main and Columbus Streets, and declaring an emergency. Suspension. Second. Second by Mr. Kuhar. Please call the roll on suspension. Ms. Schaefer. 
Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Turner. Yes. Ms. Wallach. Yes. Mr. Amrine. Yes. Mr. De Leon. Yes. Mr. Ferrara. Yes. Mr. Kuhar. Yes. Ms. Rosenberg. Yes. Of adoption. Second. Second by Roger. Please call the roll. Is there any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Please call the roll for adoption. Ms. Schaefer. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Turner. Yes. Ms. Wallach. Yes. Mr. Amrine. Yes. Mr. De Leon. Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. And Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ordinance 2019-38 passes. Okay, thank you. Would the clerk read draft number 2019-39 in title only? 2019-39, an ordinance authorizing the city manager or his designee to renew the agreement with the Haymaker Farmers Market for the subland lease of a parking lot located north of Summit Street, west of Franklin Avenue, and east of Akron Barbin and Cluster Railway Company's main line track containing 0 0.168 acres for the period of May 4th, 2019 through October 26, 2019. Contingent on the continuation of the city's lease with the Akron Barbin and Cluster Railway Company for the amount of $1 and declaring an emergency. Move suspension. Second. Second. Second by Garrett. Please call the roll for suspension. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Turner. Yes. Ms. Wallach. Yes. Mr. Amrine. Yes. Mr. De Leon. Yes. Mr. Farrar. Yes. Mr. Kuhar. Yes. Ms. Rosenberg. Yes. And Ms. Schaefer. Yes. Move adoption. Second. <laughs> Any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Seeing none, please call the roll for adoption. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Turner. Yes. Ms. Wallach. Yes. Mr. Amrine. Yes. Mr. De Leon. Yes. Mr. Farrar. Yes. Mr. Kuhar. Yes. Ms. Rosenberg. Yes. Ms. Schaefer. Yes. Uh, ordinance 2019-39 passes. Okay, thank you. Would the clerk read draft number 2019-40 title only? 2019-40, a resolution accepting the East Main Street purpose and need statement in order to define the most significant needs for the East Main Street improvement project. Suspension. Second. Second by Heidi. Please call the roll in suspension. Mr. Turner. Yes. Ms. Wallach. Yes. Mr. Amrine. Yes. Mr. De Leon. Yes. Mr. Farrar. Yes. Mr. Kuhar. Yes. Ms. Rosenberg. Yes. Ms. Schaefer. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Move adoption. Second. Second. Second by Roger. Is there any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Please call the roll on adoption. Mr. Turner. Yes. Ms. Wallach. Yes. Mr. Amrine. Yes. Mr. De Leon. Yes. Mr. Farrar. Yes. Mr. Kuhar. Yes. Ms. Rosenberg. Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Resolution 2019-40 passes. Okay, Can I have the option separated on this one, please? Okay. The, one? Fir the first one separated off. We're done with community development. Now we'll move into finance committee. Mr. DeLeon? Yeah, I'd like to move the committee meeting minutes of April 3rd, 2019, in Second. action one. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. Mr. Kuhar? Yeah, I mean, I have nothing against the, the canoe livery lease as it says, except the exception that I, I feel that even though it might seem irrelevant, I think that all uh, contracts through the city should be transparent and it should have been open for bids. All right. Anybody else? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign? No. One no. I'd like to move actions two and three. Second. Second. Was he here? Second by Heidi. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Would the clerk read draft number 2019-41 in title only? 2019-41, an ordinance authorizing the city manager or his designee to renew the agreement with Kent State University Crooked River Adventures to operate a canoe kayak livery at John Brown Tannery Park for a long-term lease proposing a five-year term with a five-year renew option, waiving competitive bidding and declaring an emergency. Move suspension. Second. Second by Mr. Guhar. Please call the roll on suspension. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. De Leon? Yes. Mr. Farr? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Move adoption. Second. Second, Second by Garrett. 
Is there any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Anybody? The only discussion I had was the previous discussion uh, that felt it should contain competitive bidding. Okay, John, we got that noted. Would you please call the roll for adoption? Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? No. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ordinance 2019-41 passes. Okay, thank you. With the clerk read draft number 2019-42 and done only. 2019-42. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or his designee to enter into a renewal of the lease agreement with Dono Development Limited Partnership for property located at 1205 West Main Street, Kent, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. No suspension. Second. Second by Garrett. Please call the roll on suspension. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. No adoption. Second. Second by Garrett. Again, any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Seeing none, please call the roll for adoption. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallet? Yes. Ordinance 2019-42 passes. Okay, thank you. With the clerk redraft number 2019-43 and title only. 2019-43, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2018. 142, the current appropriation ordinance passed December 19, 2018. So as to adjust appropriations, transfers, and advances from the various funds of the City of Kent to individual accounts for the current expenses of the City for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2019, and declaring an emergency. No suspension. Second. Uh, John and Garrett, I guess it was. Uh, please call the roll on suspension. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Move adoption. adoption. Second. Second by Mike. Any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Seeing none, please call the roll for adoption. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Ordinance 2019-43 passes. Okay, thank you. Would the clerk read draft number 2019-44 and title only? 2019-44, an ordinance accepting a donation of $600 to the City of Kent Parks and Recreation Department from Kent Environmental Council and declaring an emergency. Move suspension. Second. Second by Garrett. Please call the roll for suspension. Mr. Farr. Yes. Mr. Kuhar. Yes. Ms. Rosenberg. Yes. Ms. Schaefer. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Turner. Yes. Ms. Wallach. Yes. Mr. Amrine. Yes. Mr. DeLeon. Yes. Move adoption. Second. Second by Garrett. Any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Please call the roll for adoption. Mr. Farr. Yes. Mr. Kuhar. Yes. Ms. Rosenberg. Yes. Ms. Schaefer. Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Ordinance 2019-44 passes. Okay, thank you. That's it for Finance Committee. Health and Public Safety, there's no business. Uh, land use, there's no business except for the action recommended. Oh, Mr. Freer, in the minutes. Yeah, I'd move we uh, approve the committee meeting minutes for April 3rd, 2019, as well as the action recommended. Second. Second, Second by Roger. <coughs> Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Uh, with the clerk read draft number 2019-45 and title only. 2019-45, an ordinance amending the city zoning district's map to allow a 3.191 acre parcel on West Williams to be rezoned from its current industrial I zoning designation to commercial downtown CD and declaring an emergency. For suspension. Second. Second. Second by Garrett. Please call the roll for suspension. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? 
Yes. Ms. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. And Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Move adoption. Second. Take your pick, I think. Yeah, it does that. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Wallach, do you have a question or discussion? No, yes, discussion. Yeah, in committee, I voted against the rezoning, not because I was not in favor of the rezoning. I was in favor of the rezoning. I just wanted to put it off a little bit because I'd like us to keep focusing on the mill district. But I am going to vote for it now, but I would still hope that we continue to focus on the mill district and develop that also. Anybody else? Mr. Turner. I uh, also did not uh, support uh, the change in the zoning. I still have... Uh, concerns regarding highest and best use. Uh, I certainly um, uh, can understand Mr. Meyer's position on that. I know he's been holding that land for an extended period of time and he needs to do something with it. Uh, right now, as a representative of the, the uh, area which uh, this proposal will be uh, affected, um, I, I have concerns, especially as the impact of core downtown. I think that that's been something that's been discussed. Uh, I would hope now to get behind uh, uh, this possible development of the property to do and meet the, again, highest and best use. Um, I'm hopeful that that occurs. I would certainly um, urge more discussion with Mr. Myers and the people who live in War Three, where this is going to uh, impact, and uh, move on from there. I'm thankful that something's going to be done. Uh, it's kind of a brown field, and we'll have the opportunity to make it uh, vibrant again. And for that, I'm appreciative. And I just hope that we meet the overall goals and objectives, uh, which have been stated as before in the overall planning. Uh, of this community and um, can move forward now and uh, do some very positive things for the community. Okay. Any further? Mr. Kuhar? Uh, you know, being a resident of that neighborhood for most of my life, uh, you know, Robin had mentioned it's a brownfield now. Well, someone told me once, it's kind of stuck with me, that what you, what is ripe rots and what is green grows. and and I'd like to see that property be green and grow and put growth to the city of Kent and, and development to that neighborhood. So I definitely will support it. <clears throat> Heidi? Yeah, um, my, my ward borders that area. Um, so I'm going to vote for it. Um, but um, I do want to restate, as I did last time, that whatever, um, whatever development occurs, I will fight to make sure that it is consistent with um, the Bicentennial Plan and um, the, the needs of the neighborhood as well, so that it's, it doesn't, it fits in and it fits, it fits with Kent. Anybody else? All right. Please call the roll for adoption. Oh. You are John. No. Some of us understand that. I got it. Please call the roll for adoption. Mr. Kuhar. Yes. Ms. Rosenberg. Yes. Ms. Schaefer. Yes. Mr. Sadoti. Yes. Mr. Turner. Yes. Ms. Wallach. Yes. Mr. Amrine. Yes. Mr. DeLeon. Yes. Mr. Farr. Yes. Ordinance 2019-45 passes. Okay, thank you. That's it for land use, streets, and sidewalks. There's no business. And Mr. Flynn, when I said brownfield, I meant not John, the you're on order, too. But yeah. the color brown. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Okay. We're under new business. <laughs> Items needing council action, Mr. Ferrer. Uh, I, I would ask that the administration uh, get back to uh, the residents on Bryce uh, after discussing with the police and fire a uniform policy and procedures for how how both the safety forces would respond and why they would respond to a particular incident such as they mentioned. I think I heard that we're working on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Does anybody else? Yeah. You want to make that a motion or just a comment? Uh, I since they're working, on, I'll make it a motion just to make it official. All right. Now I need a second. Second. Second by Heidi. Further discussion, Mr. Furr. Further discussion. Yeah. Wait, wait, Roger. 
Not, or, no. Uh, no, no other discussion? All right, now you. Uh, I, I, I was interested in that, uh, the discussion regarding uh, the number of times that uh, uh, this has been an issue in that community. I can remember having the same problem uh, on the south end at one time. And uh, one of the things that was brought up, and, and maybe mm -hmm. to get some clarification on it, is that the impact on people who may have an allergic reaction is also a factor mm -hmm. in whether or not uh, um, they could continue to use the property in, in the manner which may be in some way the pollutants and so forth are going to be impacting uh, people in the proximity of where the fire is, is done. I would like to get some understanding of if that in fact is uh, the situation when uh, they go out and they can determine that. And I, I remember that, them actually applying uh, uh, that result uh, when dealing with this before. So if I could just get some clarification on it, that would be helpful. And I think it would be helpful too to anybody else. I think that's what we're asking for. Roger, you had more comment? Yeah, I, I'm just extremely disappointed in the lack of uh, dignity shown by those residents who I uh, really don't care about their fellow residents. I mean, we talk of ourselves as being a compassionate city. We talk about those things that really make this, this city special. And I'm not sure how we touch the hearts and minds of people who could basically yell at a neighbor and, and just be so disrespectful. I, I just don't know how can we get our get our residents to understand that there are ways of doing this and being able to sit down. So I guess maybe it's just the teacher in me that just deeply frustrated over and I apologize that you were treated that way. No person should be treated that way in this community. So that's all I have to say. Further? I want to believe that. I really truly want to believe that. Uh, <laughs> further? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Is there anybody else? Schedule feature council meetings, anything? Council members' comments, anything? Wow. Mayor's report. Uh, just uh, we're upon the Easter season or Passover, uh, however you celebrate it. Uh, celebrate it your way and respect the others, how they celebrate it. And if anything, sit down and have a good family dinner on Sunday, after, Sunday morning. Uh, I'm doing my food drive, city against city, Ravenna and Kent. Uh, it's again for the whole month, but drop-off period be April 27th uh, from 10 to 1 down at Kent Social Services. And for council, your ethics report is due in May. If you haven't done it, you got the forms in front of you. It's your responsibility to do that. Uh, we're going to go into an executive session. I need a motion. Um, I move that we go into executive session in accordance with Ohio Revised Code, paragraph 121.22, section G, item 1, to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official, or the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual, unless the public employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual requests a public hearing. Second. 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 Call the roll. Mr. Amrine? Yes. Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Farrar? Yes. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Sidoti? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. And Ms. Wallet? Yes. We're going to uh, give five minutes to clear the room out. I thank you.